In this video, we're going to introduce the topic of vertex colorings. We've lightly touched on this before in a previous video when we talked about the difference between an isomorphism and a homomorphism. So let's start by saying we have a graph G with vertex set V. A proper vertex coloring is a labeling of the vertex set. So we can write F maps the vertex set to a set of labels, maybe one up to some number K. Where the labels are called colors, and we've done this such that no two adjacent vertices are assigned the same color. As a first example, let's think about the four cycle with vertex set A, B, C, D. If I give these vertices labelings, which I'll write down in green, we can check if this is a proper coloring. So we just have to check every pair of vertices which are adjacent and make sure that they were not assigned the same color. But of course, the only time where we ever used the same color was on vertices B and D, and those are not adjacent. So this is a proper vertex coloring using three colors. If instead we label the vertices like this, we can see that it's not an example of a proper vertex coloring because we do have a pair of adjacent vertices which were assigned the same color. But you may notice that the proper coloring that I gave used three colors, and I can do this with only two colors. So let's draw the four cycle one more time and label it alternating one, two, one, two. And now we see that this is also a proper vertex coloring and we've used only two colors. When working in graph theory, the word coloring is used to mean proper vertex coloring in most cases. So in this video, I'm going to drop the words proper vertex and just refer to these things as colorings. Scheduling problems are one really good motivation for studying graph colorings. To see what I mean, let's think about this four cycle in terms of a practical example. Imagine that in this example graph, every vertex represents a course, and we put an edge between two vertices if there are students in common between the courses. Now, what the coloring represents is a schedule for when an examination should be held. So if we put number one on a vertex, it means that that course will have an examination in time slot one. We then look for a proper vertex coloring because we don't want to have any student having a time conflict. Also, it makes sense that we want to find a proper vertex coloring using as few colors as possible. In this case, as few time slots as possible. Now for a bit more terminology, a K coloring is a coloring of a graph using K colors. And if a graph has a K coloring, it is said to be K colorable. As an example, we can draw the path on three vertices and we can see that it is three colorable. Here's an example, three coloring. We can also draw the path on three vertices and find out that it is two colorable. So as I mentioned, we are looking for K colorings with K being as small as possible. And this has a special name. The chromatic number of a graph G denoted chi of g is the smallest number k such that g is k colorable. So we've seen from our example above that the chromatic number of the path on three vertices is equal to two. Why is it not equal to one? Well, obviously, if you tried to color all of the vertices the same color, you would have a conflict. One more term you'll see a lot is that if you have a graph G whose chromatic number is equal to k, we say that the graph G is k chromatic. Now let's talk about some basic facts to do with the chromatic number of a graph. The first fact to think about is that if a graph has n vertices, then the chromatic number of the graph is at most n. Imagine just coloring every vertex of the graph a different color, that clearly is going to be a coloring. Also, notice that the chromatic number of a graph is equal to one if and only if the graph has no edges. If the graph has no edges, there's no problem coloring all of the vertices the same color. But as soon as you have an edge, you have to apply different colors to the end vertices of that edge. Next, let's think about cycles. The chromatic number of a cycle of even order is equal to two. You can think about this by doing exactly what we did on the four cycle. Just go around alternating colors, one, two, one, two, all the way around until you get back to the beginning. Now, the chromatic number of a cycle of odd order is three. You can apply the same technique where you keep on alternating one, two, one, two, one, two, but when you get back to the beginning, you're going to need a third color. So the chromatic number is three. 
Another extreme case is the complete graph. So the chromatic number of the complete graph of order n is equal to n. This makes sense because every pair of vertices is adjacent in the complete graph. So you have to use up n colors in order to make a proper vertex coloring. And a final fact I'd like to point out is that if h is a subgraph of a graph g, then the chromatic number of g is at least as big as the chromatic number of h. This should make intuitive sense, because imagine you have your graph g and inside you have a smaller graph h. If you need a certain number of colors to color that small portion, you need at least that to color the whole thing. This fact is particularly useful when you can find certain properties inside of a bigger graph. For example, if you find a triangle inside of your graph, you know that you'll need at least three colors to color your whole graph. Given a graph G, a K coloring of G partitions the vertex set of the graph into K sets, V1, V2, up to VK, where each VI is an independent set. Recall that an independent set is a set of vertices in which no pair of vertices are adjacent. We've seen independent sets in a previous video, and links are in the description below. The fact that the vertex set is partitioned into these independent sets tells us that the vertex set V is equal to V1 union V2 union all the way up to union VK. And also, VI intersect VJ is equal to the empty set, for all i not equal to j. We call these sets v1, v2 up to vk color classes. Let's take a look at a quick example. Here I'll draw the Peterson graph and I'll start to give the vertices colors. So I'll use color 1 is red and color 2 is green and color 3 is blue. Now if you take a look at any given color, let's say the red set, you'll notice that of course because this is a proper vertex coloring, no two red vertices are adjacent. So the red set forms an independent set. Similarly, the green set forms an independent set and the blue set forms an independent set. And of course, the red, the green, and the blue sets partition the vertices of the graph. So we can write down the color classes by just writing V1 is the set of all vertices which were given the red labels and V2 is the set of all vertices which were given the green labels, and V3 is the set of all vertices which were given the blue labels. So there's an example of a three coloring of the Peterson graph and a description of its color classes. So this was an introduction to vertex coloring, and we'll see a lot more of it in future videos.